In this video, we'll demonstrate how to create and manage requirements. There are three ways you can create new requirements. First, you can import them directly from a Microsoft Word table or outline. Second, author them directly in the requirements module. And third, convert other items such as change requests or defects into new requirements. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to author requirements directly in the requirements module. To author new requirements, we simply go to the requirements tab and in the requirements tab we see we're presented with our requirement types which we've customized for our own particular account. We can expand that folder and we're presented with a set of other folders. Again, these are custom folders that we've created or modules. In this case, we're going to add a requirement to the login section of our requirements and we're going to click on the N for new requirement and that's going to follow the requirement that we want this requirement to appear after. We're presented with a rich text editor where we can simply enter our requirements. In addition to entering text, we have a number of options as you can see in the toolbar for formatting our text the way that we require. Formatting text is done just like it would in any word processor. Simply select text and click on the formatting that you require. Once you have selected a particular format, that format will be preserved in subsequent text entries. And of course, if you want to change it back to no formatting, simply highlight the text and deselect the formatting buttons. You can also insert specifically formatted data like a URL or a website. Click on the insert button there and here you're presented with a URL or an email format that you can add to your requirement. So in this case we're going to add a website. And now any user can simply click on that link and go directly to that URL. In addition, we can insert a variety of objects into our requirements. For example, a table or perhaps an image. To insert an image, we're going to click on the Insert Image link. And that button presents us with a dialog that allows us to browse our server. Or we can update the server by adding new images from our desktop or from anywhere on our network. We simply select an item and go ahead and click on the Upload button and now that image is available for all those who are authorized to utilize them. To add an image to our requirement, we simply select it. We're then presented with an Image Properties dialog that allows us to adjust the image. Perhaps we want to make it smaller if it's too big and we get a preview of that. We can align it as well. And by clicking on OK, the image is now inserted into our requirement. Now that our requirement is ready to go, we now have the ability to add some metadata to it. So we're going to select a priority setting, the status or life cycle status, where is it in the overall life cycle. We can assign this into one of the releases we have customized and assign it to one of our resources. Remember when you assign something to a resource they will automatically be notified that this has occurred. We can also add links to a requirement to any other item within the system. We may even want to link this to another requirement within our requirements document because of the relationship that may exist between two or more requirements. Now that we've established that link, you see it appears embedded into the requirement. We can also add a discussion and begin essentially a mini message board on this requirement, a discussion thread about what the requirement means or anything that we require from those who may be reviewing or assigned this requirement. Once it has been saved, it now appears in our list as number 2.3. And if we've decided that we are not sure if that's exactly where we want it to be located, we can simply drag it and highlight the item 
that you want it to appear below. So here we dragged it so that 2.1 highlighted and now it appears below it. In addition, we can also make these children or, or sub requirements simply by clicking on the arrow and saving it. Once the requirement has been saved, we can always open it back up and edit it. Simply click on the editor link and we're presented with the full edit capabilities. Of course, we can change any of the metadata or any other items in the requirement. Here you see our discussion thread appears below the comment section. Finally, a history button at the bottom of every requirement shows you the history of every change to this requirement since its inception. You'll note that changes often appear in red, especially for metadata. Thanks very much for tuning in, and for more demos, just visit our demo center at artifactsoftware.com.